Welcome to This Week in Prophecy with James Jacob Prash, presented by Maury LTV. My name is Joshua here with James Jacob Prash for This Week in Prophecy, Wednesday, November 20th, 2019. Jacob. Blessings in Jesus, dear friends. Once again, we welcome you to This Week in Prophecy. As we are presently speaking at this very moment, there's a continuing ongoing military action in the Golan Heights and in Syria with Israeli counterattacks and widespread strikes on Iranian Al-Quds Brigade positions as well as Syrian military positions acting in coordination with the Iranians. This follows the tit-for-tat response that the Iranians have promised. Iran will attack Israel for every event it doesn't like. Israel will counterattack. These things can obviously go in a very dangerous direction for both sides. Israel, however, in Syria, plainly has the clear military advantage, and it is striking widespread targets inside Syria. These are Iranian targets. Thus, once again, direct military conflict between Israel and Iran is already taking place. As always, we point to Daniel chapter 10. Let's begin this week in prophecy. Because so much of the events of this week in prophecy were dominated by the so-called impeachment procedures against President Donald Trump in the United States, major news events, particularly those of prophetic significance, have been underplayed, underreported by the mainstream media. People's attention has been diverted away from a basically groundless, politically motivated pseudo-judicial proceeding. In this, the Democratic Party and its proponents are resorting to a manufactured juridical means to try to make political gains for fear Donald Trump is going to be re-elected as president. They are effectively ignoring the words of the Iranian Foreign Minister, Vedayam uh, Preisteko, and also of President Vladimir Zelensky, who happens to be Jewish, that there was no quid quo pro. They are likewise ignoring the transcript of the conversation of President Trump with President Zelensky. They're ignoring the hard evidence in favor of hearsay evidence from an unidentified so-called whistleblower whose identity they refuse to release, who they will not allow to be questioned, who they will, whose testimony they will not allow to be heard by independent counsel, etc. It is a farce and a sham, and a large sector of the American public, particularly among independent voters, are bored and tired with it. But it has been consuming news events. The other thing that is consuming news events and diverting attention away from other news events, although it is an important event, is what is taking place in Hong Kong. At the moment, there are still some students at the Polytechnic University in Hong Kong held up against the police and paramilitary police invasion of the campus to try to drive out the protesters. It has become more and more militant and it has raised the specter of another Tiananmen Square. The Beijing regime and party that controls the government have been warning of a major crackdown in Hong Kong, and by major, it cannot get much more major unless it goes from being a police conflict to a military conflict. Now, this has happened before in other countries. It took place in Northern Ireland in the Bloody Sunday killings in Derry, Cum Londonderry. Before that, the IRA did not have widespread support. Before that, it had been essentially a police conflict. But once that happened, financial support for the provisional IRA from Irish American communities and also support for what's known as Fenianism grew in the Republic of Ireland as well as in Northern Ireland. The misguided policies of the British government in turning a police situation into a military one backfired. I'm not saying that that is the same as what is going to happen in Hong Kong, but it is not unlikely. These riots can spread to other places such as Tibet and into Western China. Watch this space. We have been warning and warning. 
God has raised his hand against the Chinese regime because of its persecution of Christians. But let's look further at this week in prophecy. We see the grand strategy of the Trump administration in countering Iran. Mr. Trump has not responded forcefully in military terms to Iran, except for limited military actions in the Persian Gulf and in Iraq and in Syria. But these have been limited. He has instead undertaken undoubtedly cyber war conducted by the NSA in league with the Israelis, possibly the British, but he's also conducted an economic war. It is now happening. Mr. Trump's strategy is to fight Iran economically instead of putting American lives on the line when you can achieve your goals by that means. Death figures are probably well above 200, but there are fuel protests in at least 21 Iranian cities now with the price of fuel having gone up. More than that, the Iranian currency, the Ryle, has virtually collapsed. It has gone from 32,000 Ryle to the U.S. dollar to 123,000 Ryle to the U.S. dollar. Increased taxation upon petroleum in a petroleum-producing country has led to these riots, but the money is required, says the Iranian regime, in order to fund social programs for people being hurt by the sanctions of the Trump administration, which have resulted in, among other things, widespread growing unemployment, as well as inflation, and again, the near collapse of their currency. We see China in trouble internally. We see Iran in trouble internally. Without doubt, the policy of the Trump administration has been to use an economic weapon. The Chinese economy is hurting in its exports already. Exports are down 22% to the United States. What the regime in Beijing fears is a downturn in the standard of living and economic growth happening in conjunction with demands for political autonomy and independence from the party, and that's spreading to ethnic and regional communities inside of China from Hong Kong. Iran is also afraid of internal social and political instability induced by economic pressure orchestrated from the White House. And that's what is happening this week in prophecy. This week in prophecy, as we have already mentioned, there are ongoing military conflicts directly between the Israelis and the Iranians taking place in Syria. The Golan has been put on alert while in the meantime, four rockets launched by Iran against the Golan from inside of Syria have been intercepted by the Israeli Iron Dome. All four were successfully removed. The Israelis hit back immediately, attacking the military facilities at Damascus Airport. There was also other Iranian targets that remained unidentified, hit even last week. This included an attack on the home of the Palestinian Islamic Jihad leader, uh, under Akram al ajudi he would have been the second leader of Islamic Jihad the Israelis have taken out in less than two weeks' time. Meanwhile, the conflict between Iran and Saudi Arabia and the proxy war involving the Houthis in Yemen has expanded into military conflict on the seas. There is a large American military presence and a British military presence on the seas, a naval presence, but the Houthis have seized three vessels, one of them Saudi Arabian. Whether or not the Trump administration is going to respond by defending the maritime interests of Saudi Arabia is a question still to be answered, and what potential impact it might have on spot market and global oil prices. But watch this event. We now see events taking place at sea. At the end, at the Straits of Hormuz, at the Gulf of, of Persia's entrance into the Indian Ocean, where there is a massive deployment, including a carrier task force of the United States Navy. The United States, by virtue of its position and location, could easily be dragged into some kind of a conflict 
taking place on the sea. Again, the proxy war between Iran and Saudi Arabia being fought in Yemen. In Israel, this week in prophecy, as we speak at this very day, late night meetings have again taken place between Benjamin Netanyahu's government and the Likud party and the interests of Mr. Benny Gantz, seeing if there could be a desperate effort to avoid a unprecedented third election, a general election, within a single year. Again, Italian-style politics coming to Israel. Mr. Netanyahu has been decrying even the prospect of Mr. Gantz forming a coalition with anti-Zionist Arab parties. President Riplin has entered the fray, defending some of the Arab parties, but it has become quite a mess. Mr. Netanyahu and Likud are plainly playing a nationalist card. Mr. Gantz is desperate. He runs out of time tonight at midnight. As of midnight Wednesday, this day, the 20th of November, he runs out of time. Unless there is an accord with Mr. Netanyahu, the overwhelming likelihood is going to be new elections for the third time. The main news from the Middle East this week has again been serially underreported and even ignored in certain quarters. <coughs> Although it has been denounced by increasingly vocally, um, I'm sorry, um, it has been denounced by increasingly vocally aggressive voices within the Democratic Party that are not supportive of Israel. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, speaking on behalf of President Trump, has said that Israeli settlements in Judea and Samaria, that is on the West Bank, do not violate international law. This flies right in the face of the United Nations who are still trying to claim that it does. And the European Union who are arguing that Israeli exports in any way assembled or manufactured or produced in the West Bank have to be labeled as such before they can be sold in European markets. The United States has gone directly against the policies of the EU and has gone directly against the policies of the UN. Effectively, it is recognizing Israeli sovereignty over the Israeli settlements inside of Judea and Samaria. This is a major, major event. It is probably close to, close to being equal with the significance of Mr. Trump's relocation of the American embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. It is close to equaling that in its significance. Now the United States, the superpower, is saying that the Israeli settlements on the West Bank are sovereign and they do not violate international law. Now, legally, they are correct. International law is determined by treaties, not by UN resolutions. Those who, are declaiming, who, who claim falsely that the Israeli settlements violate international law are inventing law. They are turning UN resolutions into laws, which they absolutely have no basis of being in international law. Again, Israel is continually cited for these so-called human rights violations, while the United Nations turns its back on crisis after crisis, from Rwanda to Sudan to Tiananmen Square, saying and doing nothing where the real human rights violations take place. It was announced by the Chinese news agency and confirmed by independent voices in Washington and in Jerusalem that the Syrians intercepted a David's sling defensive missile fired by Israel that landed inside of Syria and passed it on to Russia. This would give Russia and Russian military intelligence, Russian technical intelligence access to a David sling rocket. Now, the technology in a David Sling rocket was not purely an Israeli design. It was designed in conjunction with American defense contractors, including Raytheon, and other American technical interests in the capacity of guided missile design. 
it would be a very major setback for Israel and something of a setback for the United States in guarding its defense secrets. If this report is true, which it does appear to be, and it unfortunately took place this week in prophecy. This week in prophecy, leaked documents, 700 page dossier from Iranian intelligence indicate that there had been negotiations and there are probably ongoing negotiations, despite the Sunni Shia divide between the Iranians and the Muslim Brotherhood. The Muslim Brotherhood, among other things, are in control of its military arm, Hamas, in the Gaza Strip, recognized by the American government as a terrorist organization. The documents show that the Iranian Revolutionary Guard would be the iron fist inside of a velvet glove. In other words, using the Muslim Brotherhood as some kind of a political buffer between Iranian military confrontation and <clears throat> Israel and other opponents of the Iranian regime as the Shia crescent grows. Why would Sunnis do this? It would not happen had it not been for the alienation of Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia is disintensifying its opposition to Israel because of the Iranian threat. Hence, Hamas is beginning to look for allies elsewhere. This would not have happened had there not been something of a rapprochement in Saudi and Israeli relations. Meanwhile, this raises a further specter. The Muslim Brotherhood is active internationally, including in the United States. Three times, three times officials of the American CAIR, the so-called Council of the of um, <clears throat> American Islamic Relations have been cited by the Department of Justice and the FBI of collaboration and fundraising for a terrorist organization involving the Muslim Brotherhood in the United States. The Bush administration in bed with Saudi oil interests at the time and Gulf oil interests was more than happy to turn a blind eye and lick the boots of their Saudi de facto controllers politically and financially in allowing CAIR to carry out their activities in the United States funded by fundamentalist Islamic interests despite the connections with the Muslim Brotherhood of some of its leaders. This again underscores the need for a full congressional investigation of CAIR in the United States and a full Justice Department investigation. People like James Ogby and Hooper and others, possibly even Norquist from the Bush administration, need to be investigated in this light as it does affect the national security of the United States. The Muslim Brotherhood is simply a terrorist organization that tries to represent itself as a political one, but it controls Hamas and it is involved with other terrorist interests. Now it is making deals with Iran. This is what is happening, and it is happening this week in prophecy. My name is James Jacob Prash. We do thank you. Please pray for the situation in Hong Kong. Please pray for the situation taking place in the Middle East, in the conflict in the Golan Heights. Pray for the outcome of the Israeli political crisis to form a coalition or to call new elections. Hine lo yanum velo yishan shomer Israel. He Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps. We also continue to ask prayer for President Trump and for the United States during this time. Finally, the British government <clears throat> is again heading for an election with the Labour Opposition Party of Jeremy Corbyn. No friend of Israel, many would say an anti-Semite, and I would say it, ideologically a vile and dangerous man. May the outcomes of these elections be favorable to the interests of Christians and to the interests of Israel. Please pray for the Brexit situation. This will be a Brexit election. God bless and thank you so much for listening.